Okay, so let's see now. So we were here. We looked at the general structure of machine learning. And now we are trying to see some examples of machine learning. Let me go and play this video for you on YouTube. Alexa, set the timer for 20 seconds. Again. 20 seconds, starting now. Alexa, ask Ola to book a ride. Booking Ola. Alexa, add milk to my shopping list, please. Milk added to your shopping list. Alexa, where's my ride? Your Ola is one minute away. Okay, bro. See ya. Alexa, what's in my calendar? Ajay's mom is visiting this weekend. Alexa, ask Goa IPO for the cheapest airfares between Bangalore and Goa. The flights to Goa start at 3,756 rupees. Thank God. Alexa, turn on lights. Turning on the lights. Alexa, play soft rock songs. Playing soft rock songs from Amazon Prime Music. Alexa, turn up the volume. Volume 10. 282. 284. 287. 284. Uh, Two. Alexa, what was India's cricket score yesterday? India scored 287 for 4. Yes! Alexa, ask Zomato to place an order. I have found three popular biryani restaurants delivering to your location. That you guys are paying for! <laughs> Amazon Echo Dot, available now. Okay, so this was an example. Uh, it, uh, it fascinates people how earlier speech was considered so difficult problem to break. Like we discussed the example of um, Ken Stevens uh, and so many other phonologists, linguists trying to make rules to do speech recognition, but Today with the uh, power of machine learning algorithms, the deep learning algorithms, this problem uh, is much better tackled. Okay, let's see. Next examples. Okay, what is this? This is an example of image uh, processing. So you have an image. So the task is given an image, can you generate a caption for the image. Let's say when I look at this image, what is uh, inside this image? This is the input to the algorithm and the output is this sentence which describes the image. And the beauty is that, uh, this be the beauty of this algorithm is that it can tell uh, if you uh, point to one particular word in the sentence which it has generated, it can point that what part of the image made the algorithm come up with this word. So here it is showing this in the bright light or the white color. This part of the image made the algorithm think that this word should come. Similarly, another input. This is the input, this is the output. And when you look at a particular word, it will point to this is what made the algorithm think that this word should come in here. Next, more examples. IBM Watson Health Cloud. You have health data of so many patients and you have data from so many doctors and it can do a machine learning, it can do analytics to find out structure in this data, to find out uh, so many useful things about the patients. For example, are they taking their medicine on time? What is the status of their disease? Are, is their disease going to worsen with time? Uh, can you predict some emergency situation beforehand? So all these can be done uh, using machine learning, uh, of course, with considerable amount of effort. Now look at this example. So here we have uh, a person 
uh, sitting in a wheelchair wearing an EEG cap. So this, these electrodes, they measure different uh, electric signals on the scalp, the head of the person. And the, each electrode measure the, measures the voltage, the potential. And looking at these signals, all these uh, signals combined together ca carry some information about what the person is thinking about. So not a very, very easy problem, a lot of noise and very weak signals, but still for certain tasks, let's say in this case, uh, to drive a wheelchair, go straight, stop, left turn, right turn. For certain tasks, uh, we can make our models accurate enough to be able to do something useful. Of course, uh, it, we are still not there that we can tell, okay, what the person is thinking exactly, but at least for some tasks, we can make these uh, distinctions. Another, another application is video surveillance. Let's say if you put a camera on the street and you want to count how many vehicles are coming, how many vehicles are leaving, you can put cameras on a crossing and tell whether somebody breaks the rules, somebody is driving too rash, somebody is driving improperly, violating traffic rules. Those things can be done using video surveillance by analyzing the videos. It's a kind of image processing, but there's a, it's a sequence of images progressing one after the other in time. So it's video surveillance. Okay, so let's come back to our discussion. What is machine learning? Algorithms to make computer to do specific tasks without handmade explicit rules, but by learning from data. But it is not everything automatic. You have to do some feature engineering, which helps when small, when data is small. Basically, uh, some handmade rules, they do help when the data is small. But on the other hand, a lot of hand tuning of learning algorithms is needed. It is not simply that you, uh, everything the machine is doing automatically. An engineer has to sit, no, many, many engineers. A team of engineers uh, has to sit and a team of uh, machine learning scientists uh, ha has to sit, a team of businessmen have to sit who will be deciding what kind of product we are going to build. But okay, given that your task is fixed, even then a lot of hand tuning of algorithms, which is done by the scientists, uh, and they make the rules, the learning algorithms, they make the objective functions, they make the goals, they, they prepare the data, and so many things are required. And even if, uh, so preparing the data has its own comp, uh, its own costs. Data preparation is not easy. Data annotation, getting good data, which, which will uh, have a good impact on your model, that is not easy. Then computational costs, the training this uh, huge models, they may take uh, so much of money, so much of energy, for electric power, cooling power basically to keep the servers at proper temperature so that they don't because they generate a lot of heat to dissipate that heat you need a lot of cooling mechanism uh, big big uh, high voltage air conditioners have to be installed in the data centers and then you have uh, these big big machines processing the data crunching the data for uh, long long periods of time maybe days or weeks all together doing all these computations to train the model once the model is trained again to run it it is comparatively less effort, less computation required, but still, um, because everybody is using, then it uh, amounts to a large value. Okay, so machine learning is not a solved problem. So it is not that uh, everything is understood, everything is very defined, everything is properly uh, taken care of, means <laughs> machines can learn anything and everything. It's not like that. Machine learning is still a black box, many people are doing research, what the machine is learning. Like when, we, when you talk of uh, models, what are these models exactly learning? What are these models? Uh, how can we uh, probe into these models? How can we improve them? How can we diagnose mm, uh, uh, why these outcomes are being generated by the model? So there are so many research problems. Uh, okay, now this course, machine learning for signal processing. What is the need of this course? You can learn signal processing. You can learn machine learning. Why do you need machine learning for signal processing? Signal processing is opaque to the tasks humans are interested in. 
We looked at the example of speech recognition by Ken Stevens. We looked at the example of image segmentation. We looked at the example of translation of text. You can make handmade rules, but, uh, but signal processing is opaque to these tasks. If I want to extract uh, vowels from speech, Ken Stevens himself acknowledged that it is not straightforward. He, he only looked at the ideal examples. Ideally, the spectra will look like that, but in running speech, they don't. So signal processing is opaque to the tasks humans are interested in. The signal processing techniques, which uh, they won't directly tell you what vowel it is. They, they can only tell you, okay, what frequencies are there, what spectrum it is, but they won't tell you what vowel it is. So it is opaque to the tasks humans are interested in. We are not interested in knowing the frequencies. We are interested in <laughs> vowels or we are interested in the words. We are interested in sentences. Uh, similarly, in images, we are not interested in knowing RGB values of each pixel. We are interested in knowing objects. Uh, we are interested in knowing uh, uh, the semantic information in the uh, images. On the other hand, machine learning is opaque to the structure in the signal. Okay, machine learning is like a black box. You uh, put in a lot of data and it will crunch the data based on the training and it will give you some outputs but it is opaque to the structure in the signal. So if you just blindly feed in the data, mapping it to some outputs, it might not, it will not give you the best performance. Uh, so you have to, one thing is okay, you design your algorithms based on the structure in the signal so that they perform very well. They, with less data, less amount, lesser amount of data, they're able to generalize, they're able to learn, but, uh, uh, but uh, so it, it requires some knowledge of the structure in the signal. The more structure you can bring in, the more the algorithms will improve. Uh, so this course aims at bringing the two together. We will do, uh, we will study signal processing, we will study machine learning, but we will study how to do the, both of them together. Okay, let us see. Uh, let us do a point by point uh, analysis of signal processing techniques and machine learning techniques. Signal processing studies a wide variety of phenomena. So signal processing, they study a, a wide variety of phenomena, which means, uh, which means uh, we, we looked at speech, now, the signal processing techniques can tell so much about speech. Uh, the same kind of techniques will tell you who is speaking, whether it's a male or a female. Same signal processing techniques can tell you what are the vowels in the sound. Same signal processing can tell you uh, uh, what is the frequency or the fundamental frequency. Is it a musical sound or is it a normal spoken sound? And you can do an, a detailed analysis. But on the other hand, machine learning, a model is specific to a particular problem. If you have trained your speech recognition system, it won't tell you whether it's a male or a female. It won't tell you whether it is a, a singing voice or, I uh, mean, a, music, a, 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 a musical voice or a plain speech. It won't tell you uh, um, uh, whether it is an American English or it is British English or it is Indian English. Then signal processing relies on lesser data. So because we are studying, so we are making, we are eyeballing the data, we are looking at the data and trying to formulate rules. So with very little amount of data, also we can, using our own intelligence, we can generalize uh, to much larger class of data. And then, so we need lesser amount of data to uh, come up with these signal processing techniques. On the other hand, machine learning, uh, as we saw, in previous examples that they need huge amounts of data to be able to work nicely. Let's say speech recognition, you need thousands of hours of speech to train one speech recognition system. Then signal processing, it provides explanation. So it is easy to debug and correct. So let's say I give you an example of Ken Stevens. So he came up with these rules and he could provide explanation. Okay, if, uh, if you are rules are saying this is a mom, but actually it should be a ka sound, then he could look at the data and he could tell, okay, where is the mistake? Okay, maybe this 
frequency is too strong here is it is because of a noise or it is because of the person speaking in a different way and so he can come up with explanation then he can modify his rules very quickly to be able to accommodate that new information uh, of course if there are too many corrections then it becomes very difficult but the thing is the focus is on explanation it gives it does give an explanation uh, and we can uh, easily debug our system but on the other hand machine learning is mostly opaque to the explanations so difficult to debug uh, if my machine says let's say let's take of an example of uh, you give some medical data as the input let us say the person's temperature weight height blood pressure um, skin conductance and so many things and uh, is is the person sick or not sick now the machine will just give you an output let's say it's a, it's a deep neural network it will just give you a uh, an output and you have to if it is say the yes the person is sick but what parameter exactly is going wrong which is saying that the person is sick which is making the machine think that the person is person is sick is sick that explanation is very difficult to extract i showed you an example of uh, image uh, captioning that from the image you generate captions so that was an attempt to make a model which can give some explanation but okay that those were the best examples in that paper of course there are many bad examples most most of the examples will be very bad they won't exactly show you why the machine is thinking that word should appear there similarly why the machine should why should, why, why the machine will think that a person is sick uh, what exactly made it think um, made it think that way then signal processing are less accurate for tasks in the wild so signal processing methods uh, like i give the example of ken stevens he could make for ideal for ideal speech examples he could give very nice examples he could exactly make the rules but when you when actual spoken language comes when person is speaking running speech then those rules are heavily violated and the model is not very not able to perform very well on the other hand in machine learning high accuracy for tasks in the wild like you looked at alexa you just saw how alexa could Uh, very accurately uh, detect what the person is trying to convey then signal processing needs a lot of manual effort by experts so as we saw you have to sit down with the data analyze it and you have to come up with physical models based on physics uh, and you have to come up with all these rules to explain to to explain the data to be able to predict uh, to extract useful information from the data on the other hand machine learning yes it does need manual efforts but very less as compared to signal processing means that uh, mo- more importantly the effort is directed in a different direction it is directed in tuning your algorithm and uh, finding out the best algorithm which will give the best performance rather than on just uh, uh, defining tools for the data then signal processing large number of manually tunable parameters are there like you look at if you want to define rules for whether the sound is a or e or you want to define whether the person is sick or not looking at a lot of manually tunable parameters are there but this one has relatively smaller much smaller number of manually tunable parameters okay what we shall be studying in this course mathematical representation of data how to represent data Uh, mathematically because speech is recorded by microphone images are shot by camera uh, text is typed by uh, person in the browser let's say and then how do you represent them in mathematically because mathematics is the language which uh, machines uh, communicate with we can communicate with a machine using the language of mathematics uh, the models are all mathematical uh we will be studying okay the data is given how to classify into categories let's say speech into phonemes or images into objects or um uh, any audio into categories what kind of sounds are present in this or any email into categories like spam or not a spam categorization or classification how to predict 
continuous values so, okay from the data you can classify it into categories but you can also uh, looking at the data you can predict continuous values for example looking at the uh, looking at the person can you tell uh, what is the age of that person it is a continuous variable right from let's say from 0 to 100 or from uh, how do you predict the age of the person looking at uh, his image or how do you predict the How do you predict the temperature tomorrow? <laughs> you want to predict a continuous value. Uh, and then uh, classifying time series into sequence of categories. Okay, so given an image, you can easily classify it into okay, whether it is a this object or that object. But if I give you a series, a time series, and you, could, you have to classify it into a sequence of categories. I give you a word uh, which has many, many phonemes coming one after the other. So how do you classify? these phonemes into uh, means first let's say if i say a word hello her comes a comes l comes o comes hello and how do you classify this time series into sequence of categories how to extract low dimensional representations this is something very popular these days it is called embeddings so you compress the huge information into a low dimensional space and you can do many useful things there how to separate mixtures into their constituents uh, if i give you uh, let's say five people are talking together in a room can you separate them into individual talks or in music uh, five instruments are playing together and you are singing on top of it can you separate your voice from the instruments or even more difficult can you separate your voice and also you can separate all the instruments so total six audio tracks and similarly uh, an image is given can you separate uh, the kind of segmentation can you separate different objects and okay so all these things are okay some problems which you might look into most importantly how to evaluate a method you have got a machine learning method you made a, an algorithm how do you evaluate how good or bad it is how do you compare with other methods very important otherwise you will just make a model and you don't know whether you can deploy it in a real life scenario or not so we'll be looking at the mathematical representation of data linear models for classification and regression probabilistic models neural networks hidden marker models finite state transducers pca nmf and embedding these are the technical names for all the stuff which we discussed earlier and some more interesting stuff it's industry practices what happens in industry how do they deal with uh, data and how do they define their problems how do they collect the data and annotate the data how do they uh, uh, train their models how to find efficient training algorithms which will serve their purpose so for that they have to define their objective functions and everything very uh, very optimally and then how do they evaluate their models in real life uh, real companies and then data visualization can we look at the data in such a way that we can get useful insights from the data semi-supervised learning okay i don't have so much of labeled data transfer learning okay uh, can i use labeled data from some domain and transfer it to some other domain which has less data let us say i worked on this project in uh, speech recognition so you have for english we have got so much of data but for let's say Hindi or a regional language like uh, Punjabi or Telugu it's, it's very difficult to get labeled data so can I learn from the English data some things and which I can use to bootstrap my model to uh, start my model to to get a good starting point for my uh, speech recognition model in Hindi or Telugu or Punjabi then zero or few short learning let's say uh, you trained your model to recognize a zebra you learned your model to recognize a cat but you never learned your model to recognize a okay you learned your model to recognize a fish which has uh, which is which has got stripes 
you learn your model to recognize a cat which has got stripes and four legs you learn your model to recognize a dog which has got four legs but now a new category comes a zebra it has got stripes it has got uh, four legs but you never saw this category before but you have learned these features before so basically a class which was not see, never seen before can you can your model still predict it's a zebra data augmentation this is a technical term how you uh, get more data using the existing data data collection and annotation this is something not studied in industry in not studied in normal courses how do you collect the data and annotate it actually learning from imbalanced data generally in practical cases you have got much more data from certain classes and certain classes are difficult to get data for so how do you learn from imbalanced data dealing with invariances many times there is some structure in the data which is uh, which is very useful to exploit if you exploit that structure you can make your learning much more efficient because your final class a final prediction is invariant of all those changes in the input let us say if i am a person if i am standing in the image here if i move here or there the label of the image won't change it is still the same person this is the meaning of invariance course focuses more on practical depth than the theoretical width so we will more look at the practical concepts and which will help us to understand what is how to develop an intuition so we will go deep into certain topics and we won't explore too many topics we focus on less topics but we will explore all the different kinds of uh, problems that you face uh, in that small domain mastering simple ubiquitous basics than complicated niche jargon so okay so we want to focus on simple basic techniques which are uh, Uh, found everywhere some basic principles which are applicable in so many domains uh, rather than very complicated niche uh, terminology some very complicated terminology which is applicable only on a few on few domain developing an intuitive understanding then memorizing techniques this is very important we will be looking at the intuitive understanding of things these are some of the reference books prml a popular book in machine learning by cm bishop uh, an old book but very useful very very useful it is from the year 2006 but it contains the basics very nice basics it does not contain deep learning so that's why we have another book on deep learning by good fellow and uh, yoshua bengio arun corwell so these book this, this is the book uh, it's open uh, source available online uh, so both these books you can download online And then we have another book called automatic speech recognition a deep learning approach by dong yu and di deng this is also a new book and we we will rely a little less on this book anyways so these books are not the textbooks uh, these are just reference books so i will tell you exactly what small portions if at all you have to read otherwise uh, the course uh, i will try to make it self contained or i will give references uh, as time comes okay now some logistical announcements so we'll be using an lms called Microsoft Teams 